Hello and welcome to this video. Here you see two sergeant mortar cylinders. Um, they are both six pin locks and no modifications have been made to them. Um, they have both a very wide open keyway, although the, the shape is a little bit different. But the most interesting difference is the picking resistance. I received the silver sergeant from uh, Joshua quite a while ago, so almost one year now. Um, and I could never pick it open reliably. I had some accidental openings, but yeah, I wouldn't call that a decent pick. So I was really frustrated with this lock. But meanwhile I received this from Lux Lux, and it opened fairly quick. Also the first opening was uh, not a big deal at all. So I was really frustrated with this lock, and a week ago I pulled it out again and started working on it. I removed all pins except three, and once I could pick it open with three pins, I increased the number of pins until all six were back in their chambers. So now I can hopefully show you an opening on this lock. Well, but, but before I start uh, picking it, I will pick the easy one first as, as a warm up. So let's see. Alright, so here is the key. Bidding is not really drastic, but actually bidding doesn't uh, matter too much on these locks because the keyway is so wide open. Tension it from the pin side and use a Peterson uh, hook to pick it. So let's start. One is set. Three is binding, four, five, maybe six. Okay, one is binding again. Ha. And now two is binding. Let's check one again. It's okay, let's check two again. And it's open. Yeah, not a big deal. That was easy. We'll have a look into the locks and into the, the guts uh, later on when both are open. But now let me try to pick my, my nightmare lock. I hope that I can show you that I've learned something in one week. Ah, the, the key, sorry, here's the key, that's the bidding, a little bit um, better bidding because you see the pin number 5 is a, uh, key pin number 5 is a short one hidden behind a, a long one, hit number 4, works, and is locked up. Alright, uh, I used the thick Peterson pry bar and go with light to, yeah, light tension actually. So I tried light, medium, uh, all different kind of uh, tension uh, strengths, but yeah, um, it's very uh, important that you have the, the right uh, tension on this lock. So start with one also here. One is set. Nothing on two, three, give me a click. This was maybe four or five. Actually, I think it was five. I um, skipped four. That was six. Nice click from six. So one is okay, still okay. Two is springy. I'm at three now. Nothing. Okay, that was three. And now two is binding. I think it wants to go 
even higher. Aha, and it's open. Yeah. So tension control is uh, is crucial on this lock. So <laughs> you might say that it was an easy pick, but I needed to work. Uh, yeah, one week for uh, for this to show you. So one week and uh, three hours or two hours each day to to be able to pick it open, like you have seen now. All right. So now let's uh, gut them. Um, I will lock them both back up and. So here are the guts of both locks. The left lock is the the one that gave me so much trouble, and the left lock is the is the lock that opens fairly quick. Um, we can see both locks have uh, standard pins as drivers and key pins, but really nice pins, um, shiny, smooth, pretty pins. The left lock has balanced pin stacks, which means that the uh, a long key pin is, is asso associated with a short driver and vice versa. So when I push them together, we can see that the overall size in each chamber is the same. And I think that this is um, a measure against impressioning, because it causes every chamber to provide the same uh, resistance, uh, regardless of the length of the key pins. I don't think that this affects picking much, although uh, you feel the same uh, spring resistance in every every chamber, of course, um, which is not the case if you had um, um, the same length uh, drivers, because then you would feel um, more resistance uh, for a, a longer key pin. So this might affect affect picking, but I'm not really sure. But what affects picking is the spring tension. So when I compare the spring tension of the left of the left lock and the right lock, um, I would say that the left springs are are softer, and with uh, softer or weaker springs, it's it's more likely to overset a stack. And I think that this is uh, what happened many times when I worked on this lock. I overset um, a stack. Yeah, what else do we have? We have the plug and for the harder lock we can see that it's perfectly round, very smooth, very nicely made. Uh, for the other lock, I think you can you can see this this little flattening. So we have you can see a rectangular shape here on top. And although that this is not much um, I think it affects picking because it makes the shear line a little bit wider and then it's easier to, to set the pin and less likely to, to overset. And you can see also um, scratches here in the chambers. I don't think that this is uh, threading. I think these are manuf manufacturing uh, marks. 
All right. Um, of course, you can't see if the if the precision is is different, if the tolerances are tighter, because um, these kind of properties are if the um, if the chambers are perfectly aligned um, without uh, much deviation, if the the roundness is uh, is better um, or is, is more to to a perfect um, cylinder and all these kind of, of properties you, you can't really see I mean if you look at it like that I would say it's it's perfectly in one line if I compare it to here maybe I can see some little deviations I'm not really sure I think this is really hard to to see anyhow um, was a great adventure for me to, to work on these locks. Um, it just felt like I would uh, start learning uh, to pick locks when I uh, when I started with uh, um, <laughs> this lock with only three pins uh, in the chambers. Um, yeah. Anyhow, uh, was a great adventure. Was great fun for me. Thank you very much, uh, Joshua, for this lock and Luke's locks for that lock, and everybody else. Thank you very much for watching and happy picking. Bye-bye.